Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2024 edition to Crossosaurus Awesome. You saw the little dinosaurs you get in your goodie bag if you're fortunate enough to, to win. Um, I was in the 70-plus group, which today got me a surprise. We uh, did not take off alone, but rather right behind the 60-plus group, and I was in a bit of a traffic jam. I will show you the first lap in its entirety, and after that, uh, just clips of it. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, now we're starting with them. Oh, great. Oh, now it's going to be better. Here we are at the start. I'm thinking we're going off with the 70 plus, which is just a few people. Suddenly we're going off with the 60 plus, which is a group of about 20. And that's a bit of a crowd. I panic. I move up a little bit on the right, but then get pinched at the turn. The first technical part is a downhill and a U-turn uphill. Everyone seems to get through this okay. Coming up is the first truly technical part of the course, a short, steep uphill. Perfectly rideable, but when there's a crowd, well, I had to jump off. Then it's back uphill, but I think I had enough room here where I did not dismount. Now the course begins to open up and I am anxious to start pedaling hard and passing wherever I can. There's a straight, flat patch of gravel where you can go pretty fast before the turns begin. There are a few sharp S-turns here before we get to our first obstacle. Here it comes. Pop up the front wheel and then the rear. Easy peasy, right? Course conditions overall were quite good. The grass felt fast. It was a sunny day, not too hot, not too cold. This was a fun, fast section, but on the first lap, I overcooked it and whoa, um, almost went outside there. Uh, I did better on subsequent laps, you know, as you begin to memorize the course and all its nuances. Now it's a right turn, straight across a bridge, and then immediately another log to jump over. You see it here? Bump, bump, and then a short uphill, and then a right, and then along the cornfield, and then, whoa, back down some soft dirt, which got increasingly soft during the course. Up a short hill again, 
back along the cornfield. Now we go up a little hill, then a very sharp left, a sharp right, and the dreaded off camber turn, which again, got a little more beat up as the course uh, progresses, as the day progresses. So you had to watch that. Then through the woods again, down a hill, another sharp uh, U-turn, back up a little bit through the woods, and then, then it's a little flat for a while. Here's one of my favorite turns around this tree. I took this turn faster and faster with each lap until I finally almost fell, and uh, that was the limit, I guess. Fun section coming up here. Um, I'm doing pretty well here, cutting the turns well, cutting this to the left, going a little wide, cutting to the right, Oh, watch out. Oh, a little, little too wide there. The, the dirt was a little slippery. Then you get a, a nice little camber here, and then a little pump track. Bump, ba -dump, ba -dump, ba -dump, ba -dump, ba -dump, ba dump And then up, whoop, and down. Ew. And back along the cornfield. I have my eye on this guy in the black. I'm determined to pass him, and I'm feeling like I could, but I'm just giving myself a little, a little distance, a little rest here. This is the only tricky section of the course. It got narrow and single track, and there's a tree with a root, and uh, I made it through each time. Now we're going uphill again, and back along the cornfield. Really a scenic fun course. I, I have to say, it, it really was awesome. Now we're out of the woods and back into making some uh, sweeping turns. Here's a sweeping right turn with some roots. A uh, little, little loose soil there. Back around to the left and straight ahead for a bit. It's downhill and then a kind of a sharp right. Uh, you can see I went pretty wide. And here's the part I was good at. A little uphill and then a less than 90 degree right. You can see I caught right up to this guy uh, being efficient. Then it's kind of straight for a while and a sweeping right. And we're coming close to the uh, start finish line. Oh, here it's uphill. I, uh, I'm on this guy's wheel and uh, why didn't he? Okay, I finally make the pass, and I have another rider right in front of me. I can focus on trying to pass him. Uh, now we're coming through a few turns, and I have to note that on this course today, there were no barriers. So uh, once you got going, you really never had to dismount. Um, now it looks like, yes, I am going to pass this guy. And here's the home stretch. And I have to say also, uh, there was a legitimate headwind coming down to the start-finish line today. Um, and the, this part was a little rough. And there you go, that's one full lap. And now we'll take... And uh-oh, here comes Dennis again, who uh, just passed me. Uh, am I fading, or is he surging, or or what? Well, we'll see. I'm on his wheel, and uh, see what I can do.
Okay, I'm feeling a little feisty. I pass him again and do my best to stay ahead. Well, this is lap two of what turned out to be six laps for me. I've got a few people uh, in the distance to catch up. Uh, just past there, John Hamilton who had a little uh, trouble there. At the end of the straightaway, I'm uh, making contact with two more riders, and I'm still feeling pretty good. Then Lisa comes back and passes me. Now these people are making me work hard, but that's a good thing. A few minutes later, and I'm able to surge past Lisa again. Let's hope I can hold off. At this point, I feel alone. I see no riders in the distance. I'll have to just keep pedaling and be mentally strong. Oh boy, it's Dennis DeRosa again. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll set a fire under my ass. I've been staying with Dennis for the uh, remainder of the second lap, and here we are together again, about to go down the windy straightaway. I decide I'll be drafting him and make up a few precious watts. managed to pass him yet again before we enter the woods. What will happen from here? I don't know. <clears throat> Finishing lap three. Uh, the lap was ridden mostly alone. I've seen nobody. Although now I see somebody in the distance. Uh, my companion Dennis I have not seen. It's about halfway through the lap, and I'm still feeling pretty good. I'm able to catch and pass another rider. Phew, this is the end of my fourth lap. Clock says three to go, but it's really two. Uh, I've been alone for just about this entire lap. I'm hoping to see somebody else in the distance to give me incentive, but I don't see anybody right now. Well, traffic has surely died down on this little section. I pop right over the hill, and it's a sharp right, and back up again. It never fails to be fun. Ah, see that speck at the end of the gravel? That's another rider, somebody I can chase. Oh boy, let's go, Mike. Okay, that was a lonely lap, but uh, I was consistent. Here I am with one to go. Uh, sign says two, but it's it's one. It's a 45-minute race, and, and I'm keeping track. Okay, now getting right, passed by the leaders of the 50 age group who left 30 seconds ahead of uh, our group. No doubt, I picked up my pace just a bit, just to see how these guys go but uh, I'm no match for them. Here they are again after that little jump. They don't seem too far ahead, do they?
David Grant passes me just as I'm getting to my favorite section. Let's see if I can stay with him. I feel like this is the fastest I've gone in this section in this race, and I feel like I'm nailing the turns pretty well. Still, he pulls ahead, but not by an embarrassing amount. After I'm done with the woods, I notice a green jersey in the distance. Uh, it's a rider, I believe, in my race. Could I possibly catch him? Uh, I don't know, there's not much left in this race, but I'll do my best. Here's the uphill leading to the finish. Can you see the bike swaying a little bit? I'm sure I was out of the saddle, really punching it. Last turn, and that rider in green is crossing the finish line. It turns out, he parked right next to me. It's Bill Vitulli. I almost got you. I saw you.